Hello, you're welcome to my channel. Now, in this video, we want to find the domain of this function, f of x equals to square root of x squared minus 4. Let me just put it down for you. f of x Right. So to find the square root of, so to find the domain of this function, uh, together with the square root, and then the radicand contain a quadratic term. X squared tells us that thing is quadratic, right? Because that's the highest power of x there. Oh, good. With a coefficient there equal to one. Okay. Normally, as always, we will say that this is going to be defined if x squared minus 4 is bigger than or equal to 0, right? So we say x squared minus 4 should be bigger than or equal to 0. That will make that function to be defined. Okay, great. And then, since that is the case, you observe here that we're having um, a quadratic inequality. And the way we solve this quadratic inequality is different from where we solve an a linear inequality, right? We are not just going to um, do it anyhow. We are going to use some line, some intervals to test. Okay, so let me just bring it up. Now here we have x squared minus four should be bigger than or equal to zero, right? Good. One thing I will do here, the next thing I'll do here is to ignore the inequality and just equate this thing to zero. And let's see how we're going to get from there. So let's just equate this to zero, right? Okay, great. Now, equating this to zero, um, let's solve for the values of x that will make this um, equation to be satisfied. That tells us that x squared is equal to four. That is just by moving negative four to the right hand side, right? That becomes positive four on the right hand side. And then, to find the unknown value x, we need to take the square root of both sides. Now, since x is an unknown, right, then the square root of both sides will give us the square root of the left-hand side, that is x, to be positive and negative square root of 4. Good. So, when we want to take the square root of 4, since x is an unknown, you know, you want to find the value of x that when you square it, it gives you 4. It could be positive or negative square root of 4, which gives us um, positive or negative 2, because square root of 4 is just 2. Good. So these two values of x, they are what we call salient points, right? They are the points that we are going to consider in this line. So this is how we will use them. Remember, the thing is equality now, but our main concern is the inequality, right? So I'm going to use these two values in this manner. They are positive and negative 2. So the negative 2 will be on this side, while the positive 2 will be on this side, right? So since we are drawing a number line, we know that as we increase the right-hand side, we are tending towards positive infinity, and then the left-hand side, we are tending towards negative infinity. As I've written my negative 2 and positive 2, I would like to call this part a name. That is from negative infinity to negative 2. Then this one, B, from negative 2 to positive 2, and then C, from 2 to infinity. What you'll be doing here is to take this interval into this inequality. If it satisfies, then this interval will be taken. We take this point, negative 2. If it satisfies, then that point will be taken. We take this other interval, b, and then we take the point 2, and then the interval, c. Well, see, this seems to be too lengthy, but don't worry. Okay, we are going to be real quick about it. So, to take this first interval, a, it means from negative infinity to negative 2, we should choose a number from negative infinity all the way down to negative 2, right? We should choose, let's choose a negative 3, because negative 3 is here. Put the negative 3 into the inequality, not this equation, all right? So this one, we just used it to get the salient point, all right? Let's use negative 3. We put negative 3 here. That will now become negative 3 in place of x. Then we square negative 3, right? So negative 3, then you square it, you're going to have positive 9, right? So not the way you're squaring a negative number. Square it together with the negative sign. That will give us positive 9. So let me just put it down. Positive 9 here, where we put negative 3. Then we subtract 4 from it, which gives us 5 as a result. Now the right-hand side of the inequality tells us 0, right? So this means 5 
here is bigger than or equal to zero. And that is true. Since 5 is bigger than or equal to 0, that means the interval A satisfies that inequality, right? Let's take this point, negative 2. Negative 2 here, that will become negative 2 raised to power 2, which is going to be 4. 4 minus 4 gives us equal to 0. So since 4 minus, since 4, minus 4 is equal to 0, that means that negative 2 satisfies the inequality. The, ine the inequality says numbers bigger than 0 or equal to 0. So since negative 2 satisfies, we are going to use this interval here, negative infinity, all the way down to negative 2, and we are going to include negative 2, because even the negative 2 satisfies that inequality. Great. The next thing we'll be looking at is the second interval, b. So the second interval, b, is from negative 2 to positive 2, all right? Good. So we look at that interval. Between negative 2 and positive 2, we can see 1, we can see 0, we can see minus 1. Let's use 0. So we br bring 0 from here and substitute into the inequality, we're going to have in place of x, I just put this 0. That gives us 0 squared, which is 0, minus 4. So 0 minus 4, the answer is negative 4. Now, is negative 4 bigger than or equal to 0? No. Negative 4 is less than or equal to 0. Right? That is, it lies on the left-hand side of 0. Because of that, that 0, which you picked here, did not satisfy this inequality. In other words, the whole interval does not satisfy that inequality, right? So B does not satisfy. Good. We tested for A satisfied, tested for negative 2. Now let's test for this positive 2. Now we just put 2 here and square we have 4. 4 minus 4 gives us 0. Since this is either bigger than or equal to 0, 4 minus 4 gives us equal to 0, which means this 2 satisfies that inequality. So this 2 is going to be taken, all right? This one was taken, and this one will be taken. Then let's look at the third interval, C, right? So between 2 and positive infinity, we can see 3, we can see 4. Maybe let's just pick 4 here and plug it into the place of x. So we square that 4, we have 4 squared, which is 16. Then 16 minus 4, that gives us 12. 12 is bigger than or equal to 0. That means that that interval satisfies, right? Since 12 is bigger than or equal to 0, that means that a and C are the only intervals that satisfy. Now, since you've taken A already, we are going to take this C, right? And that will be a union. We do not take B because B did not satisfy from... Now, since 2 satisfy and 2 is the beginning point from the interval, interval C, we're going to write from 2 to positive infinity. Open there. So this is an interval or the domain of that given function, from this to this union, from this to this, this interval and this interval, together with these two points. Great. Since they are included, we just use a close bracket for them. All right. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe to my channel.